All right, I got my uh, Everlast, uh, well, one of the Everlast welders um, <clears throat> that I've had a little over a year. Um, it is a 256 SI. And I uh, don't know exactly how long I've had it, about a year. Um, if you were curious, you could, I guess, look at my uh, previous videos and on when I uploaded the first video about this thing. Um, uh, by and large, I have primarily, um, TIG welded with it. I did a little bit of plasma cutting, um, and a little bit of, uh, stick welding with it. However, since I have this cart set up now, I've got this other smaller Everlast on top, which is a 205 PI. And I use that one for stick welding and plasma cutting. And then got the MIG welder. Uh, this welder has been absolutely fantastic. I have had no complaints with it. Um, other than the stick, um, arc for style doesn't do fuck all on it. But I don't stick weld with it, so I guess no worries. But it's worked fantastic as a TIG welder for me. Um, and uh, been using it quite a bit. Just the other day on a job, uh, it actually cut out. Uh, midway through a weld and I guess I don't have the tungsten on here still anymore but it would cut out like the power supply was interrupted or like you had cycled the power switch on the back of it mid weld and it would cut gas flow and smoke the tungsten and it was a pain in the ass uh, what was interesting though is that the water cooler did not cut out at the same time um, and uh, so it Evidently is an issue in just the welder, not a issue with like the power supply or anything. And I did check the input voltage to the welder and uh, the lowest that it ever got was like 235 and it normally runs at 245 or something like that. Um, but it was only a couple volt drop while I was welding with it. So I didn't figure that was any concern. And I also ran it off two different extension cords um, and not only two completely and totally separate circuits, but those circuits actually ran off of different breaker panels altogether. Um, because it's on this cart here, um, I can't get it, you know, all too close. Well, I could, but I don't use it all too close to the wall. So I do run a extension cord uh, powering the welders. But yeah, problem happened with different cords, different outlets, and different breaker panels entirely. Um, I had actually set up the leads on the front of it. To stick weld off of it and show you what it was doing but um at least the last time i checked here half an hour ago um it was actually doing it at idle if you will um so you know nothing plugged into the front of it here and if i just turn the machine on and the tig cooler is off at the moment I guess I'll give it a minute here and see if it does it and start the video again if it does it. So that's only five seconds later after I paused it and it cycled through again. Curious, yep, see there you go. And if I come down here and turn the water cooler on. weird maybe the water cooler has some effect on it maybe i don't know i'll actually unplug it from the rear of the machine okay so that's with the water cooler unplugged and it's still doing it so um yeah i gotta figure out what the fuck's going on and uh, I want to make a separate video on this cart. I am nearly done 
doing things to this cart and it has been absolutely fantastic. I love, absolutely love having everything in one place ready to go. And, um, well, yeah, so I've got an argon cylinder on the right and a CO2 cylinder on the left. I mix my own, uh, MIG, MIG mix gas. It's fantastic. I need to make a video, uh, just, just on that by itself of the cart. Um, but it really sucks right now because that welder is quite the pain in the ass to get yarded out of the cart here. Um, but here we go. Unfortunately, it's more work than it should be to get the top cover off. Um, and I had to separate it completely from the cooler, but I was looking around here was <clears throat> really hoping to just find like a loose connection, uh, here by the power switch. But I, I don't know what I'm looking at for one, <laughs> but I don't see like any like loose connections. I'm assuming that this is weld output here on this side. And I guess looking at the face plate of it there, I'm assuming that's weld output. I have no idea what those are, but none of those are loose. And then on the opposite side over here, again, faceplate here, um, you know, it's got uh, like caution tape there on those. So assuming that those are line voltage, I'm guessing, I don't know. Um, but they've like hot glued over this, but it doesn't. Doesn't seem loose. Show. I guess that isn't going to be the case. I might just blow this thing out, see if I get lucky with that, and if not, I don't know, I'll keep poking around on it. Well, <clears throat> it wasn't very dirty, but I blew it out anyways, just to see. I did notice this little relay down here and when when it does this little <clears throat> freak out thing, I hear it clicking. So I'd be curious to see if that relay is moving. Handy that it's transparent. And um, so I'll turn it on now. It's frustrating that it's kind of like an intermittent issue, if you will, because I don't know how long I gotta wait here now to see if it's gonna do it again. So, once again, I'll pause the video, I'll come back if it does fuck up. And naturally, five seconds after I pause the video, it fucks up again. So is it going to continue to do that? Yes, it is. So, not entirely sure, well, 
I have no idea what that is. Um, I guess I'll have to call Everlast in the morning and see what they say. But uh, in the meantime, I'll upload this video. And um, if you've run into an issue like this, uh, let me know. Any help would be appreciated. So now I'm thoroughly <clears throat> confused. I uh, had the welder running, or turned on, um, and I was just poking around at it with uh, the multimeter and just, see, you know, poking around because I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at. And um, it acted up to the exact same thing, I think, three times, um, and then has been running solid ever since. And so I just went through, what the hell, five, um, just 6011s that I had uh, welding on a piece of scrap there, and it's been totally fine. Um, so I'm going to cycle the power. And see if it fucks up again. Which, I'll make you wait through this one, this last time, and then I won't do it again. Um, now, granted, I was stick welding this time, where previously it was in the TIG setting when it acted up on me. On the other hand, it acted up with not even any leads plugged into it or anything before. So I don't know that the mode that it's in has any difference or any effect on it. I'm still going to call Everlast tomorrow and see what they say. Um, but it certainly is interesting that for some damn reason it was doing just fine now, even though I haven't done anything to it. I blew it out, but that was it. Um, oh, I guess while we're waiting for this, um, I was going to say that I really only have a couple gripes about this thing. Um, these here were the handles that sat on top of the machine, and um, they're not very good quality, and they break apart very easily. And so this one here was on the front of the machine, and it's starting to break, and the one on the rear totally and completely broke, like they're supposed to. Son of a bitch. There's supposed to be another piece of plastic on there. Like so. That is missing from this one. But um, now that I've got it in that uh, welding cart, um, as such, I don't move it around anymore. And you really can't even access those handles when it's in the cart anyways. So I think I'm just going to put some zip ties on there and uh, just leave it be. And like I was saying, the, um, the stick dig setting doesn't seem to do anything. I swear to God, it's just there for a placebo. And actually, is it even... So, I guess it is actually hooked up to the board. Um, it has so little effect, if any, that, you know, I would have guessed that it wasn't even hooked up to the board. Um, that's frustrating. It'd be really nice if it did um, have an effect. Um, and I made a video earlier talking about it, but on one hand, I kind of wish I didn't buy this. Um, not to say that, like, I'm unhappy with Everlast or anything, but I wish I got the 325 SI, I think it is. Uh, this one here is a 250 amp welder, or it's a 315 LX, or something. But anyways, I, I wish I got the bigger, more powerful uh, TIG welder. This one is Stick TIG Plasma. Um, the other one that I'm talking about is just Stick TIG and no plasma cutter. Um, hindsight, this one isn't actually enough power for what I want TIG welding sometimes. Um, and if I remember right, the... 315LX I think does actually have a specific 6010 function on it. Um, but other than that, this thing has been great. And it's interesting that standing here talking... I guess I turned it off now. Standing here talking, jacking my jaw, um, 
it didn't fuck up. So what's the deal? Um, I'm not going to put all the covers on it just yet. Um, I will still call Everlast tomorrow and see what they say. Um, but you know, if, uh, somebody has got some insight on it, like I said, I'd love to hear it. And, uh, for what it's worth, there you go. Keep thinking I'm going to end this damn video and then I don't. Um, so I've got a quarter inch, uh, well, quarter inch diameter. No, fuck me. Three sixteenths, uh, three sixteenths inch diameter. Seventy twenty four by 18 inch long. Um, wish I could say that about myself. <laughs> We're set to 200 amps, which really actually is not even enough power for this, um, at least on this welder anyways. And I figured I'd just let her rip and let you see what happens if you were so inclined. And so what the fuck over, you know, it, uh, it fucks up just idling a minute ago and then it burns through an 18 inch rod. No worries. So what the hell? Um, well, I don't know. A little more power on that would be kind of nice, but. Yeah. Don't know what to make of that. <laughs>